Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell coming to you day, today from Monaco at Data Cloud 2022, where we're happy to be back in person. And I'm happy to have uh, joining me today Rudolf, Rudolf Gordon Seymour from Telecom Sans Frontières, TSF. We're proud to have you here and support all the, all the great things that, that you're doing. Can you tell us a little bit about TSF and, and you know, what it is you're doing here at Data Cloud this year? Yeah, sure. And uh, it's great to be back. Um, it's been a, a long break. Uh, last time we were here was 2019. Uh, we were kindly invited back by uh, Broad Group. Uh, and I'm representing, very proud to represent TSF um, at this uh, conference um, and also at the Data Cloud Awards last night. So we are the official charity partner. Um, and we presented an award and did a presentation on TSF uh, last night. Yeah. And so, you, you know, we've been fortunate to, to sort of see some of the great initiatives that, that you've um, supported over the years. And, and the latest, of course, is the, the crisis in the Ukraine. And can you tell us about what you're doing to support in that region? Yeah, I mean, this is, um, uh, well, it's a terrible situation. I mean, it's on the doorstep of, of Europe. Um, there's been a huge international response. Uh, TSF have been part of that humanitarian effort. We knew when this started that there was going to be a huge displacement of population. And that's, exa that's exactly what happened. So we um, put multiple teams on the ground, not only in Ukraine itself, but also on the bordering countries, Moldova, Poland, um, and also uh, put teams within Ukraine um, itself. So we've provided Wi-Fi access points, calling operations, using various um, technologies, um, and we've had multiple teams on the ground there um, for, well, almost two months now since, since it started. And I, I suspect there have been some challenges you've had to overcome there. Tell us, tell us about what it's been like. I think um, I, I think the biggest challenge has been the it's really stretching our resources um, because we've got multiple teams in multiple countries. Um, we're not heavily resourced organization, so that's kind of really stretched our resources. Also, there's the challenge of the different technologies we're using. Um, so one of the solutions we put in place was actually uh, a hotspot on the coaches that are bringing um, Ukrainians who are fleeing the conflict zones um, to, for example, Poland. Um, so there's hundreds of thousands of uh, mainly women and children um, fleeing those conflict zones and they're having to get on a, you know, a 16, 20 hour coach journey um, to move west, basically. So what we've done is we've actually provided a, a mobile hotspot solution uh, within those coaches. Um, so they can keep in contact with their loved ones. Um, and we've also um, put together a, an app for the children um, because any parent will know a, a, a child on a long journey is pretty challenging in itself. On a coach for 24 hours um, uh, would be uh, incredibly challenging. So we provided kind of an education-based app for them to work with as well. Um, and also, I guess, you know, there's also security aspect. I mean, we're kind of deploying within Ukraine itself. Um, we, we put equipment near uh, Odessa. We were working with the, uh, the mayor of Odessa uh, to set up comms down there. Um, and, you know, uh, security is obviously of utmost importance um, to our teams. So I think they, they've been the main, the main challenges so far. I think the challenge moving forward is this will be a long drawn out conflict. Um, most of our emergency deployments tend to be between three, six weeks. Uh, this one will go on for months and months. Um, so we need to address that from a resource point of view um, and also a funding point of view. Yeah. Well, so that's, you know, maybe you can tell us how people can support. It's obviously such an important uh, bit of work that you're doing there uh, to support the people, you know, impacted by this crisis. And, and I think that people in our industry are going to want to, to help out where they can. So, so can you tell us where they can do that? Yeah, I mean, um, as, as you know, I mean, we're, we're 80% of our funding comes from the corporate tech telco community. Yeah, so 
w without that funding, we we kind of we wouldn't exist. So it's incredibly important. Moving forward, obviously, we're always looking for new partnerships and more funding, um, so we can not only respond to more natural disasters or man-made disasters, uh, but also extend our um, kind of bridging the digital divide programs that we run um, throughout the globe. So, um, so yeah, we're always looking for new partners. Um, and what I would say is that if there's any companies that are starting a corporate social responsibility program, an ESG program, who want to modify or change their ESG program, um, and feel that TSF would be a kind of a logical fit for them uh, being part of the community and maybe giving something back, um, then I'd urge them to get in contact with us and also check out the uh, TSF website, tsfi.org. tsfi.org, yeah, and we will link that here in the video so that all of our viewers can, can search up more information and, and learn how to support the work that you're doing. Thank you so much for joining us. It's thank always you. great to, to hear from you. Nice to see you. And thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. Happy networking.